Bald eagles are back, back from the brink of extinction thanks to decades of conservation efforts that helped them rebound from fewer than 500 breeding pairs nationwide in 1963 to almost 10,000 as of 2006. Because of that success, bald eagles were removed from the Federal List of Endangered Species in 2007. They're no longer listed, but they're still protected by a variety of state and federal laws. In Arizona, the Game and Fish Department continues to carefully manage a relatively small but growing bald eagle population. It's the biggest it's ever been. We've got 68 breeding areas uh, in the state as of this year, three new ones this year. To make sure that trend continues, Game and Fish protects bald eagle nesting sites from public disturbance, conducts a variety of research, and constantly monitors the status of the species. Today, Game and Fish biologists are at Lake Mary, south of Flagstaff. They're leading a group of guests and volunteers to a bald eagle nest that's situated near the top of a towering ponderosa pine. Uh, it's one of our high elevation nest sites. We don't have very many of those in the state. Uh, traditionally, most of our breeding birds were down in the, in the desert environments in the lower salt and lower Verde rivers. Bald eagles mate for life, and breeding pairs often use the same nest year after year. But this nest is new. It was recently discovered during a regular helicopter survey of breeding areas. So today we're, we're out here uh, to climb a nest, ban the nestling, give it a little health checkup, and, and get it back into the nest. Uh, this is a brand new nest tree for this pair, a new nest for us to climb. So, so we, it's always a new challenge getting into a new nest. It's like a fun one. Kurt License is up to the challenge. He's an experienced climber, but this will be his first climb to an eagle's nest. It's illegal to disturb bald eagles, and violators face steep penalties. Eagles are sensitive to human activity, especially during breeding season, when a disturbance may cause them to abandon their nest. We've specifically timed these bandings for a time of, of, of the nesting cycle, where the nestlings are big enough that they can handle a couple hours of disturbance yet they're small enough that they aren't thinking of jumping out of the nest. We usually find one to two nestlings. On a rare occasion, you'll end up with three. This nest contains one nestling, and as Kurt gets closer, its parents let him know that they aren't very happy. Mom and Dad, they're flying around, yelling at us a bit, but uh, once we get everyone out of here, uh, they'll come back to the nest within a couple hours and commence the, the nesting attempt uh, like nothing else. Well, when we get up to the nest, we're, we're uh, basically just trying to get a hold of the nestlings and get a hood on them so that they'll calm down and relax for the rest of the banding process. The bird's secured, but there's some monofilament around the legs, so I'm going to cut that off real quick. The other thing we're doing while we're in the nest is looking for fishing line, hooks, any other foreign material that might be there, uh, any eggs that didn't hatch so we can get those tested and try to figure out why they didn't hatch. Kurt places the nestling into a padded bag and carefully lowers it to the ground. The nestling today was, looked like a very healthy four and a half week old nestling. Uh, it was a male and uh, lot, lots of meat on its bones and, and pretty feisty for a four and a half week old. Some lucky volunteers get to hold the nestling while biologists do their work. 12.5. By placing ID bracelets on the young eagle, researchers will be able to track it over time. We're able to get a lifetime of information on these birds. We're able to figure out how long they live, how far they go to breed after they leave the nest, um, able to identify uh, a whole wide variety of, of uh, parameters on this population to give us an idea of how well it's doing. 2.7. In the end, it was a real good thing that we were here. Not only did we get the bands that we used to identify this bird later in life, uh, we were able to, to identify that it was tied up and entangled in, in uh, monofilament. So we were able to take that fishing line and unwrap it from the bird. So now he'll be able to develop normally and not have that be a, uh, an issue uh, as it remains in the nest. Good. Luckily over the years we've only had two nestlings actually die from fishing line, but there's been uh, 
you know, several dozen that we've intervened and, and removed those threats. After taking care of business and posing for a few photos, it's time to get this bird back to his nest. <laughs> this work is uh, probably, in my mind, one of the best jobs on the planet. He likes to walk. <laughs> You'll see birds that you rescued that come back and are making young of their own that they wouldn't have had that opportunity if it, if it wasn't for us being there to help them along when they got into trouble. It's all yours. That's what it's all about keeping bald eagles out of trouble so their success story continues for generations to come.